Yeah. There was a there was an effort to uh, to uh, well we can't say impeach but uh, yeah. uh, a, a caucus inner caucus rebellion right. Well, it was two people, uh, and 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 actually they met with the Republicans and um, and began to come up with a strategy because we they only needed two Democrats to switch, and they could get up to fifty six votes. And once you elect a speaker, is a good argument. Once you elect him, he's elected for two years. Mm -hmm. The Constitution says you will meet on the first Tuesday, I think it is, of January or the second Tuesday, of January, whenever it is, and elect the Speaker of the House. It doesn't allow for any other elections, so. Uh, the, it was an interesting, it would have been an interesting battle, even if we had lost that initially and a Republican had got elected, what would have happened if we'd have got the votes back three weeks from there right. and, and went back to a different, I uh, don't know if you could have done that, you know, the, the guy would still be the speaker even though he may not have had control of the process or the person would be a speaker. So this took place at the time of the initial vote. Yeah, and uh, we found out about it the uh, the night before the vote, or the, the sometime in the afternoon, right. the, that afternoon prior to the vote being the next morning. Uh, found out about it, and we were able to. We had people we couldn't get there. I mean, right. um, and there were some Republicans that weren't very happy about that too. I mean, they wanted a Republican position. They right. didn't want a House Democrats running as a coalition with them. So there was some philosophical arguments. Well, what was at work uh, there? I mean, what, what was they the were gonna, One of them was going to be speaker and the other one was going to be uh, chairman of appropriations, I think. I see. And yeah. that might have been hard to sell the Republican caucus. Yeah, the whole. but they never got past the Republican leadership to sell to the Republicans as a whole. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were able to stop that. I mean, we had people flying in from Florida and people on sailboats. I mean, it was an office mess here or something. <laughs> uh, we won, and uh, and it went forward from there. And, we, and, we, and that was a very difficult time because we, we only had 56 votes, I think, or 57. I can't remember the exact number. Uh, it was a... It was... I probably, beca I probably did a better job in those two years than I did in any time I was speaker in my own, and when I look back and evaluate what I did as a speaker. Right. The fact that I was still able to get things done under, in a highly partisan charged mm -hmm. atmosphere because of the recalls, the animosity that it generated, uh, and, and myself had been weakened because of the tax increase and some caucus members doubting that I knew what I was doing, and so that was a problem. Uh, it, it was a diff difficult two years. And then the last two years I was speaker was a lot easier because we won all those seats back. And so I had right. a tremendous amount of credibility then. It was back up here again. So I went right. here, 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 you know. Right. Was, you never, did you ever run for, for another office? No, I got Did, I did you ever look at Congress or uh, Senate governor, or governor? Or? Jim Blanchard called me and, uh, and asked me when Martha Griffins was not going to, would I want to run for lieutenant governor with you? And I thought about that, and I, I, I said, no, I, I didn't want to do it again. Why not? I, I just, uh, I'd reached the point where my, my boys uh, were, were very young, and, but they were getting to the age where they were getting to do things. And uh, I didn't want to miss the hockey games and the soccer games and watching them grow up. And I know if I was going to take another elected position, it would be one of even increased, I don't think it would have had any more responsibility to be a Speaker of the House, but it would have required a great deal of time and effort away from my family. And I made the right decision. I got to watch them grow up. I'm very proud of them, and, and I was right there with them every step of the way. Some of it fun, some of it wasn't, some of it challenging. Even today it's very challenging, <coughs> but but uh, I, I know I made the right decision in watching my family grow up. And his, now I can look back at it and say, if I'd have been governor, or if I'd have been speak, uh, congressman or United States senator, I would not have had the fulfillment I have from uh, watching my boys grow up. I, I, I missed out on a lot of my daughter's life when I was in Lansing. I, I missed out a lot on her early life, and, and I, it cost me one family. Uh, my first wife and I had a divorce, and, and I blame that on myself, not her. It was entirely my fault. And, and I just was bound and determined it wasn't going to happen again. And it worked out well. Mm -hmm. Worked out well. Well, you, you work, I was thinking the other day, you, uh, I remember you were a, a early promoter and, and supporter of uh, Al Gore for mm -hmm. uh, president right. uh, back when, it, when he first was. Uh, 86, I think, wasn't yeah. it? Or 80, I know I ran his campaign in Michigan. We didn't right. get a single delegate. <laughs> 
and I was also an early supporter of Bill Clinton's, and uh, and, I, and also an early supporter of, in fact, Dave Holmes and I were the first two. Uh, Dave Holmes was a uh, Detroit-based uh, uh, senator. Yep, an African-American senator in Detroit, and he and I were the first two to endorse Jimmy Carter. Uh -huh. So I, I jumped on those p campaigns, uh, not because they were Southerners, which I was once accused of, but because I felt at that time that they, they were different. They were outsiders. They brought a breath of fresh air into the process. Al Gore, I, in my opinion, Al Gore is one of the smartest human beings I've ever met. And I still have that opinion today. I, he's an extremely intelligent person. And, uh, and I, I really uh, I thought that eventually he would be president, even after we lost that, mm -hmm. lost as bad as we did. I went to New York with him. I campaigned there. I campaigned in Colorado. I popped around this stuff, but but I was I was so impressed with the person. I said, "This man is going to be president of the United States someday. May not be this time, but he's going to win it eventually." And then he went on vice president. And I thought he would end up being president, but he he just barely missed it. Right. So I got kind of not lucky, but I was a little perceptive in the sense of of, of recognizing his his ability and talent. And he's still a very significant person. All right. No, for sure. Yeah. Did you ever look at Congress as an option? I was uh, when uh, Ed Pierce ran. Ed Pierce and, and, was and in the state senate. The state and, senate uh, and, uh, from Ann Arbor. Uh, and uh, UAW and MEA and and uh, several groups came and said, "We want you to run uh, against Purcell. You can win. The polling data shows you the strongest candidate we've got. You will beat Purcell." Uh, Pierce was running from Ann Arbor, uh, which was a uh, that the furthermost part of the district, uh, but they felt, and it turned out to be true, that Ed was going to have a harder time outside the city than mm. where I was acceptable in Ann Arbor, but also acceptable in Wayne County, which a part of, I'd already represented part of Wayne County for the reapportionment, brought me back in. I'd represented Van Buren Township and Belleville, so in that I had had to work with the uh, what was the old 15th district people, and, and I was in that congressional district, so I worked with those Western Wayne County officials, Democrat officials, and they knew me very, very well, and I had reasonably popular there. So the polling data showed that I would be by far the most electable Democrat. But I didn't. I didn't want to go to Washington. I had no desire to go to Washington. I had no desire to be one of 400 and some odd people. And I said, No, I'm not going to do it. So right. I stayed where I was at. If 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 one of your kids or uh, one of their peers came to you now and said. Gary, we, we really are interested in, in running for state legislature. What, what would be your advice? I'd tell them it would be one of the best experiences they've ever had in their life. Even given as bad as the people have messed it up with term limits, it would still be a, a very rewarding experience for anyone. I, I think that any person who has an opportunity to serve in public and, and does it in an honest and, and faithful way that they walk away with it with one of the best things that can possibly ever happen to them. I've always felt that way. I still feel that way. And uh, I think most people who've done it, like yourself and others, can still feel the same way. That I, I would highly recommend it to my kids or anyone else. And I point out to them, you know, you can lose. Fortunately, I never lost an election, but you can lose one. I can tell you about that. Do you, what'd you run for? I thought you. So I, I, I first ran for state senate. And, oh. uh, uh, before I ran for the house. Oh, I didn't know that. And then I uh, ran in the primary for governor. Yeah. In '94. Uh, well, I don't think you felt that you were the leading candidate. I, I believe that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I peaked much too early. <laughs> the uh, so you you left the legislature, kind of ready to get out because of. Uh, 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 your experience had just been so demanding mm -hmm. uh, uh, and went on to lobby for several years. Well, I looked at two. I had, the first option was my brother had uh, tried to get me to come back to Alabama for years to, to work in his development company, uh, to work with him as a partner. And, and I, I invested with him along the time, but I hadn't had an active role. So I was, I was actually at the time that I quit, I had bought the, uh, I'd agreed with Little Caesars to, to pick up the Little Caesars franchise in Alabama, and mostly from Montgomery down through Gulf Shores in the southern part of uh, Alabama. And, and we were seriously looking at the possibility of moving back, going to Alabama, uh, getting involved in the development business, and uh, maintaining a home in Michigan, but doing both. And I was trying to weigh that on how it would work with the, my whole new commitment to my family. And uh, Bobby Krim came to me 
and said he wanted to out of the lobbying business and wanted to know if I was interested. And I said, well, I don't know, Bobby, I'm not, that doesn't appeal to me. And he, he's kept working at it, and finally I ended up agreeing with him to buy him out of his business and went in there. Bobby was tired of lobbying at that time. Would you get tired of it very quickly, mm. especially if you've been a, uh, an effective policymaker, I'd say a, a leader or something. I, I don't think you can stay in that business very long. 